what is the difference between an SUV and a crossover? A lot of people will call crossovers SUVs, despite there being a pretty big difference between them. As far as I'm concerned, a crossover is a vehicle that is based on a car platform, usually front wheel drive based, with an all wheel drive option, and has the similar look of an SUV. But a true sport utility vehicle historically has been rear wheel drive based on a truck platform and uses a body on frame construction. Our spotlight is on this 2019 Dodge Durango GT. Now while it has shed its frame on body design and gone with a unibody setup, this is still one of the very few mid-size sport utility vehicles sold in North America. We're going to be going over what's new for 2019, what's new on this GT trim, and everything else you need to know if you're in the market for a sub $60,000 actual SUV. I said we're going to be going over what's new for 2019. We actually haven't featured the Dodge Durango before, so this will be a full episode of Test Drive Spotlight. But there are some changes for 2019, so if you are coming from an older model, this is what's new. Specifically on this GT trim, you get the SRT and RT's front end look. They've added the grille, the lower fascia, as well as the hood that you get on the SRT models. And these vents up here, they're real. They actually work. You put your hand on it, it's actually <laughs> keeping me warm. It's a little chilly. So these actually work, the front ones work, everything works in terms of the grills, which is really good. In fact, last week we did the 2019 Ram Rebel and it had some fake grill fins. So it's good to see that there are some vehicles out there that actually use real stuff and they actually are functional. So cool stuff going on there. Again, you do get the front end look from the SRT models. So if you're driving along, the only thing that you would notice that isn't an SRT is the badging. This would say SRT, but if you're a Dodge Chrysler Mopar fan, you'll already know that, but that really is the only thing that would distinguish this from the front. Now, the vehicle that we have here, I mentioned is $58,500. It comes with the stock engine, Chrysler's Pentastar V6, produces 295 horsepower, 260 pound-feet of torque. It's certainly no slouch with this vehicle. It does have a class four trailer hitch on the back. We'll talk about that as we get back there. I'm really impressed with the way that this truck looks, especially helps having HID headlights up front. That is an option. You would normally have halogens, which would be a bit of a bummer, but you do have HID headlights with automatic HID high beams as well and LED fog lights at the bottom. I mentioned there's also a lot of options on this vehicle. More or less, this is fully loaded for the GT trim here in Canada. You can get small little details that aren't option on this, again, like the engine or even the rear entertainment system on this. But for the most part, you're looking at what the maximum vehicle could be in the GT trim. The tech group, which is $950 Canadian, you get adaptive cruise control, which is a huge plus, something that you would have to go up quite a bit in a lot of trims to be able to get that, especially in, yeah, we're gonna consider the crossovers to be part of this segment, just because people who are really looking at these probably aren't gonna care whether it's an SUV or a crossover. So if you take a look at some of the other midsize three row crossovers as well, you usually have to go up quite a bit to get adaptive cruise control. So again, part of the tech package you get, adaptive cruise control, advanced brake assist, forward collision warning, lane departure with lane keep, and rain sensing wipers. This truck also has the safety, security, and convenience group, which adds the automatic high beams, cargo cover, the HIDs, which certainly are a huge plus over any halogens that you get on this vehicle, and power steering wheel. Now, the final package on this is the black top. It's $1,995 Canadian, it is a little pricey, but really, if you're going for the whole look, yeah, you kind of need it, right? So you get 20 inch high gloss black alloy rims, as well as gloss black badging on the back. So the GT badge, the four wheel drive, and the Durango badges are all black. So there's a lot going on with the front of this truck. There's a lot of features, a lot of options, as I said, but let's jump around back now. We'll talk about a couple of the features there, and then we'll jump in onto the inside of the Dodge Durango. The rear end of the Durango really hasn't changed a whole lot, especially on the GT trim. Again, with the black top packaging, the badges are black. On this dark metallic paint, it blends in a little bit more. I like it. I mean, it's not a huge thing to have the badging blacked out, especially for two grand. It really is the rims that make that difference. But I do find that the back end on this is pretty good. Now, the lift gate is power. You just push the button. There is no sensor to be able to open it up because it does have that tow group package on the back. So where you would expect to have maybe a sensor to be able to put your foot underneath the trunk and it'll open up, there is a tow hook there instead. You do have the cargo cover. Space here is good. Obviously, if you put the third row up, you'll have less trunk space. But for the most part, this is 
pretty comparable when it comes to the other vehicles in the midsize utility vehicle segment. I'm not going to say sport utility vehicle because again, this really is one of the very few that we've tested aside from the 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee. We do a lot of crossovers, but again, space wise, not too bad. You can shut the trunk. There is a button on the inside. You just give it a press, wait a couple seconds and you're good to go. Now, one thing I don't usually mention is how the automatic locking for the doors work on this car. Chrysler products have been one of the very few that we've tested where you can leave the vehicle running and still lock the doors from the fob or the front doors. And I'm sure that there is a technical reason why a lot of manufacturers do not allow you to lock your car if it's running, especially with the new smart keys. I think it's a safety perspective thing, even though the car won't really go into drive if you don't have the key with it. I think it still is a safety thing. I think manufacturers don't want people leaving the cars running, leaving their kids inside thinking, I'm going to keep the car running. It's going to be warm inside. I just got to go run in and get something from the store. I'll leave the kids in there. I think that's why. The two most recent vehicles we've tested were the Rams that we had. They allowed you to keep the truck running and lock the doors. Same with this. You could also say that the Rams do it because they're used more for commercial purposes where you're probably going to be leaving the truck running. You have things going on like accessory power, so you need it running. And even these, they're used a lot for police issue. So again, police officers want to keep the trucks running, leave the doors locked so somebody doesn't steal it. So that could be another reason why. But until we get other vehicles from Chrysler, I'm not going to know for sure, but I think that's the reason why these ones you can still lock. And we've had comments about it. People have asked. So you have to look at the specific vehicles like this Durango or the Ram 1500. They'll allow you to keep the engine running and lock the door. There are two packages optioned on the back of this vehicle. The trailer tow group four is because it is a class four hitch. Costs $825 Canadian. You get that class four hitch, full size spare tire, which could be important for a lot of people. Heavy duty engine cooling to make up for whatever you're towing. A rear load leveling suspension setup, which in luxury terms is a self-leveling rear suspension. And then an electronic trailer brake control system, much like we've seen on the other Ram products we've tested. For $500, you also have blind spot and rear cross traffic alert. I guess it helps because as we'll talk about on the inside, the backup camera on this is very bad. Very similar actually to what Mazda uses. So the image quality is not very good. But anyway, let's jump in now. We'll talk about the inside of the Dodge Durango GT and then we'll take it on our road test. So with this GT trim, you get black leather seating with suede inserts. They actually are pretty nice. They're comfortable. A little similar, if I dare say it, to the Volvo XC40 that we did. Those also had a new suede type of interior. So these suede seats are comfortable. You don't slide around in them because the suede helps to keep your bottom in place. No, I like it. Good position. Driver has power option as well as memory. Two memory options on the side. And for the most part, space is good in here. I have tons of headroom, especially without the sunroof. I've got, I don't know two, three inches of space up there. And I'm sure that you could put the seat down a little bit more, but I'm actually in a really good position. Visibility also is not bad at all in this vehicle. The A pillars sort of wrap outside a little bit. They're not just a straight line. They have a bit of a curve to them. And I find that the overall visibility in this vehicle is good. The digital gauge cluster isn't anything different than we've seen on other Chrysler products. In fact, I've driven a number of other Chrysler products before starting test drive, and it does feel very similar. You do have access to be able to see things like the speed, like your music, your trip, things like that. Steering wheel is pretty much what we see from any Chrysler product. You do have panel shifters up at the top. They are small though, because you do have controls for volume and track skip on the back. We do see this a lot with Chrysler products. So the flappy paddles are there as well, and you can use them if you want to. The one package on this vehicle in the front here is $995 for the Uconnect 4C system. It is Chrysler's 8.4 inch navigation with Sirius XM, Apple CarPlay, Android Auto, and 4G LTE. So you get a lot going on there. It is very similar to what we've seen on previous models. I wouldn't say the design is dated with the volume controls or HVAC. I think that it actually has held up pretty well, but it is an older design now on the interior. Aside from that, you do have some blue, not ambient lighting, but I'll say blue mood lighting and even that's a very liberal term to put it but you do have it around the cup holders some of the button placements and the lights so it does work out well when you're driving at night there's a few other creature comforts front and rear heated seats the outboard center row has heat heated steering wheel which is a nice plus and home link which we don't usually find on these vehicles maybe at the price point but you usually again have to option it up quite a bit in order to get it Usually this is the time that I'm going to tell you we're going to go on a winter road test, but I'm going to actually jump into the back seats. We'll talk about that for a minute and then we'll take it on hopefully a nice winter road test to test out the all wheel drive system. I'll apologize to anybody right now who's hoping I'd be getting into the third row of this vehicle. It is not happening in the winter here. 
I already have the vehicle configured with the cover on the back, so I'm not going to take that out, put the seats up, and wiggle my way into the back. Just trust me that I do not fit in it, okay? We're going to talk about the center row here, but it has two options back here that I think are important. They both come together if you're configuring it this way. You do have the second row console and storage. It goes in the center here. It replaces the third seat that would be in the middle here. So you do have a nice size storage bin here with holes to be able to put your charging cables into it, have your devices come out, illuminated cup holders, as well as heated seats. As we mentioned, you have a 150 watt outlet with two USB ports at the bottom where the HVAC controls are, as well as control for whether the HVAC setting is going to your feet or to your knees. Plus, you also have controls in the roof. There are controls to be able to turn on the vents, change the temperature, and other things through here. So it's great if you do have multiple people in the car. If you have kids or if you're using this for Uber, you can turn them on, which will keep off because it's actually started up the system now. So you do have roof vents. The only thing that I noticed, <laughs> red liner here, a little squeaky. I don't know if that's a problem or if that's how it normally is, but it just feels like something isn't quite stuck in properly it feels like it should be there and it would make this a lot more solid but just something to note you do have lighting in the center with these little map plates that you can push around just like on an airplane you can move them into a better position same thing with the back now we're going to hope for winter i know it is snowing a little bit here but it's not really that much to do proper winter testing with this vehicle so we are going to try our best to see if we can take it on a winter road test, try out the all-wheel drive system, try out the eight-speed transmission, and put Pentastar V6 to the test. Well, I hope you guys like snowstorms, at least being able to test these vehicles and see how they perform in a snowstorm because that's exactly what we've ordered up here today. Now, you'll see at the bottom corner, we do have Yokohama Ice Guard tires on this car. I've got all the specifications in the lower third of the screen here and the first thing i will tell you is they do not grip as well as the toyos that we had on the subaru forester a couple months ago i found because i've had this truck for exactly seven days now we're filming this on our last day it, it, it's probably the tires but the back end does kick out a little bit and the front end will slip a little bit with this car and i think it's the tires see i'm, I'm putting on not really heavy brakes there but the car, the car started to slip, which is not really ideal. Now, again, I was hoping for snow, <laughs> maybe, maybe not this much snow, but I'm gonna pull into a parking lot here, but this has been unplowed here. And it's important, again, the front camera, it's not the end all be all greatest system, but I think you can kind of get an idea of how this car performs to the limit you know again if you're going slow which we'll do right now you know oh it's snowing bad i'm going to go slowly around this corner no problems whatsoever it handles exactly as you expect an all-wheel drive vehicle with snow tires to do you can take it around you know it does a good job but give it some gas and even though the traction control is on it will go it'll go sideways and i mean that's fun there's certainly nothing that's unfun about it you can definitely do some drifting but that's not what i want this truck to do i want it to be a safe vehicle when it's snowing now if i turn off traction control you have to push it you could hold it too and it'll turn off stability but you know it'll drift a little bit better oh yeah it'll drift a lot better because there's no there's no mode for the all-wheel drive it's on all the time so you can turn off traction control you can do some drifting like we just did there but that's not what I want this truck to do, at least not right now. In the middle of a snowstorm, I want this thing to be safe and secure. We're in a pretty bad situation here for snow. Most people aren't going to be driving, as you can see, and if I were to maybe hyperlapse some of the footage here, because I'm not just gonna show you eight seconds of clip here, but there's literally nobody on the road. Like there's nobody on the road, except for the people who are plowing, that is it. There is not a single car I have seen so far. And again, you can't see it on the camera, but I'm looking left, I'm looking right down the main highway coming out of town here. I see lights for a snow plow. So I'm the only idiot out here today in this kind of weather. But it works. You know, a truck works. If I had a front wheel drive vehicle, I wouldn't be happy. If I had probably most other vehicles crossovers, yeah, I'd still get the job done still be able to drive on the roads but we're not going on the road right now if you remember if you watched our ram rebel video 
I took it off, off road. Now I'm gonna go do the exact same thing here. That Subaru there might be pulling me out, but the snow here we've gotten, uh, it's not, a, it's not, ooh, that's a big, a big pile. That's a big, oh yeah, ha <laughs> ha. It was like a huge amount of it. We've gotten like maybe half a foot of snow over the last 12 hours, not even. So, I mean, we've gotten a significant amount of it. And again, we're in that same area that I was filming the Ram Rebel. That way, the, uh, the way that I filmed some of the B-roll might be a little bit more difficult. Oh, and this is what I was worried about. into some deeper snow here and it doesn't look a whole lot worse than what I was doing before but it's it's to the point where the truck was stuck and again it might be because we're not a hundred percent sure where the roads are there we go it's over that bump there and I apologize for the front camera because I mean it's getting covered the truck's not even been running for that long and like we've already got significant ice build up oh yeah here we go now, the problem is they've plowed some of the area so they've plowed in my little escape patch here but take it slow so that we don't damage the front of the truck but there we go wasn't the easiest maneuvering through there possible but it it did it it got the job done and here we are now back on I don't even think these are paved I forget so I think these are still dirt roads covered in snow not a whole lot of it apparently we have to stop here but uh, yeah I mean like that's a yeah, you can feel the brakes going again it's uh, it's a lot of snow <laughs> it's a significant amount of snow here I'm uh, uh, probably the craziest person here I did see a Subaru going out so he's the only other guy on the road and he might uh, have to go to work or something you know people still need to get their jobs done but let me talk about some of the stuff about this truck right we're doing a winter test here so it's a little hard for me to focus on things like performance we're not doing any of that but i will tell you right away that even though this has 295 horsepower out of the pentastar v6 and i figured people would be complaining about it it gets the job done right you have the option for the 5.4 liter hemi you also have the option for the srt model so if you really need more power out of this vehicle you have the options for it but for day-to-day -day stuff getting back and forth to school to work doing grocery run things like that the pentastar v6 does a great job i haven't had any issues getting onto the highway fuel economy is all right we'll talk about that when we wrap up to give you the full numbers that we did with this vehicle but for the most part this isn't a bad engine yeah, I think we've mentioned it before that we are in a unique position here, not only being in Canada, but since moving to Quebec, being able to do English language stuff here in a province that gets a significant amount of snow. And especially here too, compared to Montreal, Montreal gets like nothing compared to this. So I have a good benefit to be able to show you guys how the snow works. And I hope you appreciate it. I know it's probably not relevant to every single person on earth, but because you guys are good sports about it, I'm going to turn off traction control, hold down the button for a couple seconds, and, oh, it doesn't turn off stability. But we'll do a couple more little, little donuts here. Not really, though. That truck is just, it's good. It's just, it takes a second for that all-wheel drive. But there you go. Do slower donuts. Whee! Have a little bit of fun before the snow plows come, or the police, for that matter. I mean, I don't think it's illegal to do donuts here, but wee! Oh, but I hope you guys enjoyed the driving segment here. I know it is a really bad snowstorm, but thanks for watching this part. We're going to go wrap up now, talk about what we like, dislike, fuel economy, and some of the other little things that we need to wrap up with on the 2019 Durango GT. We certainly had some unique road conditions during our week with the Durango, and it gave us a good chance to see what this midsize SUV was capable of. Overall, the exterior styling of the Durango GT is one of its strong selling points. Now with the SRT appearance package, buyers will be able to get the look they want without having to go overboard with pricing. We also like Dodge's approach to vehicle options. 
As mentioned, this was the second of five trims, yet we had navigation and adaptive cruise control, which are usually reserved for higher trims from the competition. Interior seating comfort was also good with the suede and leather combination, and overall vehicle space worked for us. Finally, the fuel economy was alike, coming in at 10.9 liters per 100 kilometers or 21 US miles per gallon on our 100 kilometer test loop, and 13.2 liters per 100 kilometers or 18 mpg on our 848 kilometer week with the Durango. Now, there's no doubt that we preferred the 2019 Durango over its brother, the 2017 Jeep Grand Cherokee that we featured a year ago, but the Dodge isn't perfect. The headliner was the only noticeable fit and finish issue that we had, and could be attributed to somebody previously banging their head into the roof and damaging a clip. So unless we have some owners in the comments chime in with their experiences, we won't know for sure. We also experienced similar heating complaints that we did with the Grand Cherokee, where we needed to make continuous temperature adjustments in order to keep the interior temperature comfortable, and had to override the automatic setting often due to excessive fan speed. The last major dislike from us relates to the awful backup camera. Image resolution and clarity were poor considering the 8.4 inch Uconnect screen had a good size and ratio to it. We'd like to see improvements from a lot of manufacturers when it comes to the quality of the cameras they use, as it's often a negative feature when a poor quality camera is included. We often experience the Grand Theft Auto effect when driving a vehicle like this, where we start noticing them all over the place. The Durango seems to be a popular option for people looking for something that fits into the SUV segment, despite it being a unibody truck. Is this the SUV for you though? Let us know in the comments below about which non-crossover SUV takes your top pick.